It's 11 trivia questions on music-based movies from Footloose to Dirty Dancing. Get ready to boogie. This is Trivia with Buds. It be and welcome to another episode of the Trivia with Buds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Buds. Thanks for checking out my show. Today's episode is all about music based movies. So if you like stuff like Footloose, if you like stuff like Dirty Dancing, this episode is for you. And we've done a whole episode, I think, on Dirty Dancing, if I'm not mistaken. I think I did an episode about a year ago with my wife, Ashley, on uh, Patrick Swayze movies, and we did a split episode of Roadhouse and Dirty Dancing. So if you want more Dirty Dancing related trivia, go back and check out out that episode. Remember, you can always just search Trivia with Buds in any topic on your podcast app or on just Google, and it should take you to a link to an episode I've done on that topic. We've done over 500 episodes, so there's tons of stuff to listen to. I was checking out some movie-related trivia for a round I'm writing next week, and I was looking at the highest grossing movies from 1999, and I wanted to share those with you since it was 20 years ago. And these just kind of caught my interest. So let's see if you remember some fond memories or some not so fond memories of these 10 movies. Number one at the box office made $431 million. I think these are just U.S. grosses. And this is back in 99 Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. So that was number one on the list. I remember seeing that in theaters. Everyone was very excited about it coming back, you know, the whole Star Wars franchise after being gone for so long. So that was uh, pretty fun at the time. And when you look back at it now, it's not that great. But it's not a terrible movie. I don't think any of those three uh, first episodes people rag on the most are that bad. I think they're just like, you know, different, not as good, that kind of thing. Number two was The Sixth Sense with $293 million. The Sixth Sense, that was a quality film. I remember seeing it with all my friends back in the summer of eighth grade, going into high school maybe, or seventh going into eighth grade, something like that, back in 99. Great movie, fun twist. Everybody loved it. Number three, Toy Story 2. This was a movie that I think I was just out of the realm of like, I got to see animated movies. There was that time in my life where you're like, I don't know, maybe 11 to 16, where you're like, I'm a little too cool for that. I don't need to see animated stuff. I like horror movies now or whatever. And I think that I totally missed the Toy Story 2 bandwagon. And I loved number one. I've said it on the show before. I carried a Woody doll into fifth grade way past the age where you should have a doll. And uh, my friends were like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I thought was, I liked this movie. I got it for Christmas. <laughs> it's a weird memory I have. But Toy Story 2 did not see till m- many years later, maybe about 10 years ago was the first time I saw it. Number four, Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. That is the sequel. And I remember seeing that with my brother Tom and laughing my ass off. The uh, movie made $206 million. Next up, number five, The Matrix. A lot of great movies from 99. $171 million, just beating Tarzan, Disney's Tarzan, which also had $171 million and a few hundred thousand less on this list. Tarzan was number six. Number seven, Big Daddy. Great Adam Sandler film. One of the classics, I'd call it. Big Daddy. Number eight was The Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Big Daddy made $163 million, by the way. Mummy made $155 million. And number nine was Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts and I think uh, Richard Gere. They were doing a lot of stuff back then, $152 million. And number 10, The Blair Witch Project, $140 million. Cost almost nothing to make. That is a success story that led to the found footage revolution and genre of horror films. Just to let you know, number 11 was Stuart Little and number 12 was The Green Mile. But those top 10 are the ones I wanted you to revisit in your head. Think about where you were when you saw them for the first time. Today's episode is about music-based movies, like we mentioned, and these questions were all written by my brother Scott Buds in Orlando, Florida. So we're going to jump into these 11 questions that I used at my live trivia nights last week right now. Here we go. Question number one for music-based movies. Footloose was loosely based on a town that outlawed dancing. In which state? Was it Idaho, Oklahoma, or Texas? Question number one, Idaho, Oklahoma, or Texas? Footloose was loosely based on a town in one of those states that outlawed dancing. Which one was it? Idaho, Oklahoma, or Texas? Number one. Question number two, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans, is a famous quote from what 1990 film, 1995 film starring Richard Dreyfus. Number two, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans, is a famous quote from what 1995 film starring Richard Dreyfus. 
Question number three, who played the scorned machine gun wielding ex of Joliet Jake, that's John Belushi, in the film The Blues Brothers? Number three, who played the scorned ex of John Belushi's character in Blues Brothers? Number three. Question number four, what year did Eminem's masterpiece 8 Mile get released? Number four, what year did Eminem's 8 Mile get released? Number four. Question number five, what 2000 film had the following synopsis? A high school boy is given the chance to write a story for Rolling Stone magazine about an up-and-coming rock band as he accompanies them on tour. Number five, what was that 2000 film? Number five. Question number six, the film Whiplash is mainly about playing what instrument? Number six, the film Whiplash is mainly about playing what instrument? instrument number six question number seven joaquin phoenix and reese witherspoon were both nominated but only one of them walked away with the oscar for lead actor or lead actress in 2005's walk the line which one of them won the oscar was it reese or joaquin number seven Question number eight, coming your way, what were the names of the rival gangs in 1961's West Side Story? Number eight, what were the names of the rival gangs in 1961's West Side Story? Question number nine, 1984's Purple Rain was a box office success for Prince and the Revolution. What was the name of the rival band led by Morris Day in the film? Number nine, what was the name of the rival band led by Morris Day in the film? Number nine. Question number 10, Mark Wahlberg and Jennifer Aniston starred in the 2001 movie Rockstar. What band did Marky Mark sing for? In that film, was it Steel Dragon, Steel Demon, or Steel Panther? Number 10, what was the name of the band that Mark Wahlberg's a part of in the movie Rockstar from 2001? Is it Steel Dragon, Steel Demon, or Steel Panther? And the bonus question for two points. In 1987, everybody was buzzing about the hit film Dirty Dancing. Name the resort and the state it took place in. That was your two-point bonus question. If you're playing along at home, what was the name of the resort from Dirty Dancing and what state did the movie take place in? That is the end of this round on music-based movies. We'll be right back in just a second with the music-based answers. We are back with some questions and answers on music-based movies. Number one, Footloose was loosely based on a town that outlawed dancing in what state? Your choices were Idaho, Oklahoma, and Texas, and your answer was Oklahoma. That's right, Oklahoma banned dancing at one point, this small town. Number two, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, is a famous quote from Mr. Holland's Opus, starring Richard Dreyfuss. Number two was Mr. Holland's Opus. Number three, who played the scorned machine gun wielding ex of Joliet Jake, John Belushi, in the film The Blues Brothers? That was Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia herself, Carrie Fisher, Blues Brothers. Number four, what year did Eminem's 8 Mile get released? Lose Yourself back in 2002. 2002, I had to sneak in to get into that movie at Chicago Ridge Theaters in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. I wasn't old enough. Number five, what 2000 film had the following synopsis? A high school boy is given the chance to write a story for Rolling Stone magazine about a band almost famous. Cameron Crowe, great movie. Probably one of his last good movies. Number six, the film Whiplash is mainly about playing what instrument? That is drums. It is a drumming movie. It is Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons, and it's really good. If you have not seen that movie, I love the end of it. It kind of just ends, and uh, it's cool. There's this big transformation kind of thing that happens. It's great. Number seven, Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon were both nominated, but only one of them walked away with the Oscar for lead actor, lead actress in 2005's Walk the Line. Who won the Oscar? It was Reese Witherspoon for lead actress back in 2005. Number eight, or the names of the rival gangs in 1961's West Side Story, The Jets and the Sharks. They're remaking that movie with like, uh, I don't know, some people right now. It's probably going to suck. Number nine, 1984's Purple Rain was a box office success. What was the name of the rival band led by Morris Day in the film? That would be Morris Day and the Time. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, I think I want to know you 
know ya. Number 10, Mark Wahlberg and Jennifer Aniston are in Rockstar. What band is Marky Mark singing for in the film? It was the first choice, Steel Dragon. Steel Demon, I don't think is a band. Probably at some point it was, but uh, not for this context. And Steel Panther is kind of that 80s hair metal parody band around L.A. So Steel Dragon was the answer there. For two points in 1987, your bonus question. Everybody was buzzing about the film Dirty Dancing. Name the resort and state it took place in. It's Kellerman's in New York. The Catskill Mountains of New York. Kellerman's in New York. Those are your questions for today's quiz. If you liked them, reach out to my brother Scotty Buds on Facebook. Scott David is his name on there if you want to send him a message. Or you could send me a message and I'll make sure he gets it he wrote those questions he's been writing a lot of trivia questions for me lately so thank you so much my bro scott buds it's time for the question of the day brought to you by funky monkey designs of san dimas california what was channing tatum's character's community service duty in the film step up in the first step up what did channing tatum have to do for his community service which led to him dancing and then marrying that woman i think in real life tweet me your answer at ryan buds or email ryan buds at gmail.com to be eligible for a prize yesterday's question of the day answer was pat patterson for the first intercontinental champion of all time in wwf and your trivia team name of the day is herbie fully bloated herbie fully bloated check out funky monkey designs at fmdesignsinc.com for all your printing needs and if you want to win real money playing trivia check out skillyworld.com thank you guys so much for listening to the show thanks for telling a friend about the show who likes music-based movies and we'll see you tomorrow for more trivia with me cheers